Welcome back. In our last lecture, we have uh, discussed on detectors, particularly secondary electron detector and back secondary electron detector. Uh, I have uh, discussed uh, quite in details about secondary electron detector. Uh, today, we will discuss more about back secondary electron detector and then we will move to sample preparation for SEM. So, as the, um, I, I told before in last lecture, in present day scanning electron microscope, we do not use the ET detector for collecting backscattered electrons. We have dedicated backscattered electron detector. It is because uh, the um, trajectories of backscattered electron detectors are different than the secondary electron detectors. So, with ET detector, we would ab not able to collect backscattered electrons with a high efficiency. Their collection efficiency will be much lower. Thus, backscattered electrons, electrons detector are placed just below the pole piece to increase the collection efficiency. As you see here, uh, in these cases, in the left side, you have uh, we have our uh, detector uh, that can be placed uh, at a high takeoff angle or low takeoff angle depending on whether we are uh, specimen is without tilt or with tilt. So, if it is zero tilt or no tilt, then this back uh, electron detector should be placed at high takeoff angle. So, that more number of back electrons which are going towards the electron beam, they can be collected and when sample is tilted, then more number of backscattered electrons will be coming towards the low takeoff angle and collected by this detector and the position of the detector can be changed inside microscope. But most cases, we have the arrangement like that you see in the B. Here, uh, there is a flat type of detectors which is uh, which can be placed, which can be mopped or it can be pushed so that it will be positioned just below the pole pieces and in the center there is a hole through which electron beam comes and here we have a hole electron beam call comes and strikes the specimen and the backscattered electrons which are detected are which are emerged which are collected by this backscattered electron detectors. As we know backscattered electrons have a higher energy. So, if we are using an acceleration voltage of approximately let us say 10 kV, uh, we have a sufficient number of backscattered electrons who are quite high energy. For that case, uh, we do not uh, need to put bias to the scintillator in the detector. In previous case, case like in secondary electron detector case, ET detector, we used to provide a bias voltage of around 10 to 12 kV to accelerate the secondary electrons or to increase their energy when they strike to the scintillator material, scintillator material to produce the light. But here as the backscattered electrons have a higher energy, we do not need to provide a bias to the scintillator. It can be unbiased, still it can collect the enough number of backscattered electrons to provide us the signal. As secondary electrons have lower energy, so that is when we if we do not apply the bias to that uh, detector or scintillator, then we will not uh, we will not collect any uh, secondary electron at all. Also, we have another way of collecting the secondary electrons which are uh, produced due to the backscattered electrons. You see uh, this conversion of backscattered electron to secondary electrons is possible by the arrangement shown in this uh, diagram. Uh, it, this works in the same principle as that of applying positive bias to the ET detector. Here uh, we apply a, another bias around the sample, we provide another bias grid around the sample. This bias is minus 50 volt. If we put minus 50 volt then secondary electrons which have, which have energy less than 50 volt, they will not pass through this grid, they will not pass through this grid, they will within this grid. 
only the electrons which have energy greater than 50 volt would able to pass through this grid and when they pass through these grids, this backscattered electron, they will mostly as they go upward towards the electron beam, they will strike to the pole piece, lens pole piece. And be, uh, on the lens pole piece, there is a converter target. It is mostly mag magnesium oxide is used, MgO, because MgO has a large, uh, it produces uh, uh, very good secondary electron yield. When the backscattered electrons strike to the MgO, that would produce large number of secondary electron those are SE 3 these are SE 3 and those SE 3 will be, con, um, be collected by a normal ET detector which is uh, which has been discussed in our previous lecture by applying again uh, a bias potential of uh, 10 kV and collecting all the low energy SE 3 electrons. So, here uh, we could only collect SE 3 uh, by applying a bias to the bias around the um, around the sample um, we, we have a grid bias grid around the specimen. So, this way we can convert also backscattered electron to secondary electrons and get the information about the specimen. Then we um, this most of the backscattered electron detectors used present days are solid state detector. This solid state detector works um, like uh, uh, these have semiconductor material, it works with the principle of generation of electron holes inside the semiconductor when a backscattered electrons of energy greater than uh, the energy required to uh, produce uh, electron hole pair uh, in silicon uh, is uh, incident on this uh, detector, uh, then we would able to produce uh, electron hole pairs and those electron hole pairs can be separated by applying uh, the bias reverse bias and uh, as electron hole pairs are separated we can measure the current and then amplify it to know how many backscattered electrons are uh, produced uh, produced using the solid state detector. So, for example, in case of uh, most of the cases silicon is used. So, to produce an electron hole pairs in this type of detector we need energy around 3.6 electron volt considering the different uh, average energy of 3.6 ele electron volts considering the different type of loss. And those electron hole pairs are separated by applying the reverse bias and then the current produced uh, is used to amplify and, and that current will be proportional to the number of uh, backscattered electrons uh, incident on the detector surface. And this uh, detector have certain advantage because uh, uh, these are semiconductor wafers, they are uh, semiconductor uh, detector, they are in the wafer form, they are nothing but a thin wafer uh, and that they can be made annular to place below the objective pole piece, they can be uh, they, they are also flat, uh, they can be placed close to the specimen and collect backscattered electrons with a large angle, the large solid angle almost like uh, 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 2 pi r that type of angle high angle we can collect. Then multiple detector arrays can be uh, uh, arrays can be placed on the detector to collect the information uh, from the sample uh, from a chosen area. Uh, this can be done uh, by using solid state detector and this is what the detector used in the present day uh, scanning electron microscope solid, solid, solid state detector. We also have uh, another type of detector called channel plate detector. When uh, when we want to study uh, the microscopy at a low uh, acceleration voltage, uh, at low acceleration voltage we will have a less number of uh, electrons coming out of the sample and therefore, uh, we need to increase the gain of those electrons to manifold so that it can be uh, uh, it can be produced enough signal to be to create an image. So, the channel plate uh, electron multiplier detector um, uh, is, uh, uh, is good, uh, good enough to produce signal for a microscope operating from uh, 10 uh, uh, no, 100 electron uh, EV 100 EV to a few kilo electron volt. So, here what is happen uh, this is what the detector and uh, these are uh, these have uh, glass capillary these are capillary. Uh, 
and once a backscattered electrons is striking to the capillary in, in inner wall of the capillary, then it will produce secondary electrons. And backscattered electrons have higher energy. Once it strikes lose energy, it will lose its energy and produce uh, several number of secondary electrons. And those electrons will keep on striking to the inner wall of this glass capillary and producing more and more number of secondary electrons as the energy is uh, lose uh, energy is lost in the process it will keep on producing more and more number of secondary electrons because production of secondary electrons need less energy incident beam so in this process a more number of secondary electrons each uh, and we provide a bias to it we provide a bias as you see we provide a bias so that electrons will backside electrons will keep on striking to the inner wall and uh, increasing the gain of secondary electrons so and uh, there, uh, there, um, uh, they, the, those electrons are also accelerated by the by applying this bias or potential uh, producing the cascade of electrons. This is what channel plate detector, which is uh, which can be used uh, to produce or enough signal when we operate the microscope at low acceleration voltage of uh, 100 eb to few kb. Uh, this is what about the different detector. Uh, we have uh, uh, secondary electron detector and backscattered electron detector. They are uh, dedicated uh, electron detectors used in the modern day microscope separately. So, there are uh, these are the most common uh, actually uh, there are three detectors is used one is through the lens detector to produce high resolution uh, image above the objective lens pole piece and below the objective lens, lens pole piece we have another secondary electron detector nothing but ET detector and just below the pulp piece we have backscattered electron detector. So, these are the different detectors which are used uh, to collect uh, the um, signal generated from the specimen particularly secondary electrons and backscattered electrons. Uh, we also um, know that our uh, whole system is under vacuum uh, because electrons is produced from the cone and that has to pass through the column to reach the specimen. So, its path to be evacuated to a high vacuum. So, we have several kind of pumps used to produce vacuum and in the gone area we have a much higher vacuum. Uh, this vacuum is in, in the range of uh, 10 to the power uh, minus 8 Pascal approximately in that range high vacuum. Uh, as you know if we do not have high vacuum then we cannot use field emission gun or uh, which have a very sharp uh, tip of tungsten the tip size is less than uh, 5 to 10 nanometer. Uh, then at the gun uh, there are different type pumps one is the little rotary pump which is a rotary pump that uh, can gives us like 10 to minus 2. We can have a dry pump that also give dry pump do not have oil. So, in present microscope mostly dry pump is used. We have oil diffusion pump which can reach a vacuum of 10 to minus 2 to minus 7 Pascal. So, this oil diffusion pump is oil diffusion pump is used in the most of the scanning electron microscope. We also have a turbo molecular pump which can produce the required vacuum, but it is not used mostly in the microscopy purpose because uh, it produces uh, the noise uh, because of the motion of its blade, uh, it produces sound and therefore, uh, those are not suitable for mic uh, high resolution microscopy. So, turbo molecular pump is not used in the electron microscopy uh, for the electron microscopy to create the vacuum. On the other hand, sputter ion pump is used, sputter ion pump also, uh, these oil diffusion pump and sputter ion pumps are used, sputter ion pump mostly near the gun region or also turbo um, oil diffusion pump is also used for creating high vacuum in the gun region. In the specimen chamber, we have a vacuum around 10 to the power minus 5 to minus uh, 6 Pascal and uh, we have a differential pumping system to create vacuum throughout the system uh, or throughout the microscope. So, these are about the different parts of the microscope. We have discussed on uh, electron guns, different type of electron gun, field emission gun, LAP6 gun, um, thermionic gun and also we have discussed on short key gun. 
So, these are the different type of gons we have uh, discussed. Then we have in the column we have first conden uh, condenser lens, then objective lens, then we have a deflector, deflection system, deflection coil, coils are there. So, after that at the bottom we have objective lens, then we have discussed on the um, detector present in the different type of detectors to detect the signal, then there are different type of pumps used in microscope to create the vacuum. Now, after discussing with all these parts, we will move to the samples, because sample is placed inside the specimen chamber. So, now we, we can have a different type of sample, uh, it can be bulk or thin film, a sample can be in the powder form, it can be simple wafer or glass slides, it can be any biological sample or we, we can also have a food stuffs or sample containing oil, we can have different type of sample. So, now uh, we will discuss how the sample to be prepared for the microscopy purpose. It is not same for all kind of the preparation is not same for different kind of sample. One should take much care especially for biological sample and food stuffs which um, has contains both oil and water etcetera. For dry sample or uh, hard sample it is much easier. So, that is what let us see. Uh, let us see first the uh, sample specimen chamber. This is what you see in the photograph specimen chamber and in the specimen chamber certainly it is also in high vacuum. Uh, this is our uh, sample stage, this is our sample stage, this is our sample stage uh, to which our sam sample is mounted inside, uh, inside the chamber and to, to be examined under the microscope. So, let us see what is required for specimen mounting. Some of the accessories that is required for specimen mounting are shown here. This is our holder which holds the specimen. These are called SEM stop or pin stop. stop. These are like pin stop. These are made up of aluminum because we, we want uh, anything, we can use any metals uh, which is uh, not magnetic in nature. So, those type of uh, metals can be used, Mag we use metal because metals are conducting, highly conducting, therefore, aluminum is most suitable. So, aluminum uh, SEM stop or pin stops are used uh, to, which, uh, to which specimen is mounted on this, we will mount the specimen. We have special kind of tweezer as you see here to hold this uh, um, uh, SEM stop, this is a special kind of tweezer. And when this pin stop are put on to the uh, uh, holder, then we also have a here you see a uh, screw is there, a screw is here there. Uh, after putting that pin stop into the holder, we tighten it by the screw, so that it will be held strongly on the um, um, holder. Now, the sample is placed on the top of this stop by different ways. We normally use on a, on a most easiest way is take a conductive tape, it is made up of carbon, carbon conductive tape. There are also copper and aluminum tapes are available, they are conducting also in, conducting in nature. So, you fix a tape, it is a double sided tape, it is a double sided tape, you fixed on the aluminum stop like here as you see. Also now in the uh, nowadays in the market there is directly uh, such kind of carbon tap of various size is available. Then you can mount the sample or fix the sample on to that uh, tap which is adhesive, this is adhesive tap, this is adhesive tap which will adhere on to the SEM stop and also it will adhere your sample be it powder or any bulk sample. Now, you can see that there are different type of stops are also you, different shape of uh, stops are also available. Those are used for different purpose like if I want if we want to uh, see the cross section of a sample, then the sample can be placed vertically and the cross section can be seen under microscope. If we want to see the sample with a particular angle, then we can use uh, this kind of uh, uh, SEM stop. There are different uh, different uh, the stop with different type of angle of this. Uh, 
uh, different type of angle is available. So, depending upon at what angle you want to uh, measure you can use such kind of stop. Moreover, moreover it is also um, possible to rotate the uh, holder in the uh, specimen uh, chamber it is also possible in some microscope that facility is also available where uh, um, you can rotate uh, to an angle this uh, sample holder you can rotate to a particular angle and then view under the microscope. So, these are the uh, specimen mounting accessories uh, required. Uh, we also um, uh, not only the carbon tape, but also we have conductive paste also use, is used, carbon paste is also used. Uh, the paste is coated on this uh, ACM stop, aluminum stop and then sample is mounted. So, now let us see how the samples are mounted. As you see here that we have uh, if we have a thin film or bulk sample, we have conductive tape, uh, we have conductive tape, this is a conductive tape and you fix the specimen directly here you fix the specimen directly here. Also you can use, uh, you can fix the um, sample and then you can fix the sample, this is sample and then you use conductive paste to stick the sample on aluminum stop, aluminum is conducting and you can directly use this. You have bulk sample, then make sure that you uh, do, at, uh, you put a tap from top of, top of its surface to the stop, properly hold it. And in this way, you can fix either thin film sample or bulk sample onto the ACM stop. Uh, we can have a, we can also have a powder sample. Powder sample is done by two process. One is spring, uh, sprinkling process method, where you first put a conductive tape. Here, conductive tape is there. Then you um, put some powder onto it, press it little, and then blow the loose powder, then blow the loose powder, direct method, just putting the powder on the tap, press it little, so the, because it is adhesive tap, some of the powder will stick to the tap and the loose powder you can blow it off, directly you can use powder sample. Other way, you can sprinkle, you can use uh, water soluble, soluble carbon paste, you can put the carbon paste which is conducting onto the um, stop and then before the paste dry, you take a uh, cotton swab, uh, you take your sample in a cotton swab, then just a uh, little bit of sprinkle on the, uh, the paste and let it dry. So, in this way you can also do and uh, in the latter case, in this cases as it is a paste your uh, sample or materials will be easily adhere or more strongly adhere, adhere and that is suitable for high magnification study. And suspension method. Uh, in the suspension method uh, uh, is used when you want your particles to be highly dispersed. For example, you are preparing nanoparticle, some cases nanoparticle are agglomerated, uh, in some cases they are loosely held to each other. So, then what you can do, you can first disperse the particle uh, in a ultrasonication. If you disperse, then what will happen the, if the loose particle, then the particles are loosely uh, bonded, they will be separated out. So, you can have a individual nanoparticle. But if you are real, they are strongly um, agglomerated, then they will not be separated from each other. They will still remain be agglomerated. And when, once you put onto the uh, uh, ACM stop, you could under the microscope, you can see whether the particles are very, um, that involves separated or the particles are agglomerated that you can do uh, by suspension method. If you want particles to be dispersed well, then disperse the powder in a suitable solvent suitable solvent means it is organic solvent which does not suddenly react to its sample and do it the ultrasonication and then apply a drops of the suspension on an aluminum foil. Aluminum foil, aluminum is conducting that is why we take aluminum foil and spread it using a blower and when it dried it caught up a part of the aluminum foil containing the powder and then fixed onto the SEM stop to be studied under the microscope that should be placed on a con conductive carbon tap or any other taps, conductive taps. If we have a, if we have a wafer sample or glass sample, then trim it to the size that you want. Uh, you trim this uh, to you, you use a diamond knife to cut into a size uh, uh, required size, and then put onto this uh, SEM stop on which a carbon tape is already mounted. Uh, you can have a cross section. 
So, in the cross section again you cut it and put it to vertically, cut the sample put it to in vertically manner and in this way you can also do the um, cross section studies in the um, while mounting the sample. Then we have a biological sample, biological sample are not dry, they contain lot of water. As we know our SCM is operated under high vacuum. So, biological sample cannot be used directly under uh, uh, cannot be directly used under microscope or SCM or any other electron microscope. So, they must be prepared uh, to, to the desired requirement. So, there, there are three steps to prepare biological sample, first is to fix biological sample are a live sample, they are soft sample, they are mobile, they can mop because they are live. So, it ha they have we have to make we have to fix them that is called fixing to make them rigid and still. First step is to make them rigid and uh, rigid and still that is called fixing. Second step is to dry. So, dry means uh, we have to because they have uh, water water is there or liquid is there. So, we have to dry them. Then we have to do third step coating to make them conducting because most of the biological sample are not conducting in nature. So, these three steps are important for preparing the biological sample. So, fix fixation can be done with uh, uh, some uh, agents such as glu uh, glutaraldehyde, paraformaldehyde, osmium tetra uh, tetroxide. So, here uh, glutaraldehyde. Uh, reacts quickly with protein and acids, reacts quickly with protein and acids and uh, but it penetrates slowly and it forms a irreversible cross linking with the uh, sample particularly with the tissues uh, while fixing it. Uh, it also do, um, does same with the uh, proteins inside the uh, biological sample. This is about uh, glutaraldehyde. On the other hand paraformaldehyde uh, that uh, reacts slowly glutaraldehyde react um, quickly with the protein and amino acid on the other hand paraformaldehyde react slowly, but penetrate first into the amino acids and proteins. And here with paraformaldehyde uh, the fixation is reversible. On the other hand osmium uh, tetroxide is toxic in nature, uh, but uh, it also um, do not uh, uh, penetrate uh, very quickly but it cross links unsaturated uh, lipids and it produce also um, osmic acid uh, that also preserve the uh, sample and also uh, improve the contrast. So, these, these are the fi uh, fixing, uh, fixing reagents used for preparing the biological sample. Then second step is uh, drying, uh, drying um, second step is drying or we do the dehydration that should be done slowly. So, that it does not deform the shape should not go deform it should uh, and it is done with organic solvent such as mostly um, the alcohol solvent ethanol acetone methanol then final it is done by drying. So, it can be air drying for insect and it is little harsh uh, that is critical point, uh, point drying uh, which is time consuming and prefer for plant tissue the uh, critical point drying or that is called CPD short for we also have chemical drying using uh, HMDS such as hexamethyl diacylizer for animal tissues. So, in this way biological sample is prepared. Similarly, food stops or sample containing oils are also uh, need special care because they also have water and oil in the sample they are not suitable to be uh, examined under high vacuum. So, they can be uh, studied under low vacuum that is why we there is also dedicated microscope called environmental SEM or ESEM. So, ESEM is prepared for such kind of uh, 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 such kind of uh, measurements or study of uh, food stuff of sample containing oil. And here also those, those uh, samples are put onto the conductive paste or adhesive uh, tape, uh, tape on the stop, then sample is mounted. So, this is about the different type of uh, sample uh, that are uh, prepared uh, in the um, for the um, to be examined under microscope. Then final is the metal coating. 
metal or conductive cutting is extremely important to examine any kind of uh, insulating sample. Uh, without metal cutting there will be a huge charge accumulation because electrons are coming and striking to the specimen. So, they will be accumulated on the specimen surface and we will not able to see the clear uh, surface structure. So, metal cutting is paramount for any insulating sample. So, metal cutting is primarily done with uh, different type of targets such as gold, gold is uh, very good highly conducting metal or gold palladium, PT palladium these are alloys and platinum, platinum and also carbon. So, now the particle size of the when we deposit the gold, the deposition is primarily done with a magneton sputtering, this is the magneton sputtering uh, unit. So, uh, the gold um, uh, when the, uh, is magneton spotted on this specimen, the size of the gold uh, particle is a little larger. So, for a high magnification study, it is not suitable because we will see the gold particle also on the surface of our sample. For high resolution studies or in FESM, mostly PTPD uh, alloy is used as a target to uh, provide the metal cutting because they have a much finer size um, of the particle and that would provide a thin coating on the specimen giving us to um, that may providing us the clear picture of the uh, actual surface of the sample. Moreover, thickness of this um, thickness of this um, uh, film metal cutting is also important for uh, low magnification or large area study little thicker metal cutting is fine or good, but for high magnification or high resolution study uh, thinner the metal cutting better is the performance or better will be the image quality. So, what happens in the absence and presence of metal cutting as you see in the left side there is a non conducting sample, non conducting sample here electrons are getting accumulated at the surface because they cannot uh, transfer pass they cannot um, pass to the ground. On the other hand here a metal cutting is provided, a metal cutting is provided. So, electrons will not be accumulated at the at the surface of the sample therefore, giving us clear cut image or giving us clear surface image. So, metal cutting is very important for all kind of non conducting sample. Without that we will not able to see clear surface image. So, here you see a charged up image which is which have no metal cutting. You see in the left side image that is quite bright region, bright region this region are very highly bright, this region highly bright it, it do not keep clear surface image. Moreover as you see in the right side image there is there is lines, uh, samples is moving and this type of problems happens when a, when the sample is not conducting or when sample is non conducting in uh, that means insulating in nature. So, what we have uh, discussed in today lecture uh, or in with uh, along with the previous lecture, the position of the detector inside the specimen chamber is very important to collect the secondary electron or back secondary electron more efficiently. Sample preparation is also very important. Um, otherwise, you will not get desired information. All insulating sample need a metal cutting, biological sample need special care prior to be examined under the microscope. Uh, these are the references. Thank you.